So because this temple is uh, in celebration and of support of women in fertility and not women in fertility. Oh my god. Hey guys, welcome to Tokyo Creative Play. I'm your host Emma and today I'm going to tell you about what I did recently. Recently I went to Hiroshima. If you guys haven't been to Hiroshima before, it's a little bit further south uh, in Japan and it's beautiful. It's actually one of my favorite places in Japan and it had been a while since I'd been there last. I think it's been about two years since my last visit before. Thank you. Hello. Don't eat my hair. <laughs> when I went recently, I actually got to experience a side of Hiroshima that I'd never experienced before. I got to go to areas where I'd, I'd never seen it and there, there weren't so many people. It was really relaxed and just a completely new experience. So I'm going to tell you guys what I did and we're going to enjoy it together. I also made a video on my own channel about the experiences. So if you want to check that out, it'll be in a link in the description down below. But Let's get started. So one of the things that I did on the trip is I went with a company called Sokoiko on a bicycle tour. Now Sokoiko takes you around, uh, we went like up a mountain and we went around and saw some temples. They take you on a cycling tour so you don't have to figure out where to, where to go or anything and they take you and show you things that you wouldn't have seen before if you hadn't been on the tour. So a really really good time with them. The bicycles themselves are electric bikes so they actually give you a bit of a helping hand. I was worried because we were going to be going like up a mountain on bicycles and I was like how am I going to do that? I'm not very fit. <laughs> but the bicycles have an electric powered system so it helps you up the mountain. It was so good. Have you guys ever been on an electric bicycle? I had the best time and now I really really want to buy one. It's so good. So we went halfway up a mountain and then we got to climb the rest of the way and when we got to the top it was like the most beautiful view of Hiroshima I've ever seen. It was just really natural. It was surrounded by trees and we could just see basically the whole city. It was beautiful. I had a really really good time. Wow. They use the boat. Mm. Wow. I can't believe Bang Kuhen started here. <laughs> it's so popular all over Japan now. Bang yeah. mm. <laughs> And it was really relaxed. The guides were super nice. I made friends with Kana, who was one of the girls on the trip. She was really cool. So we visited a couple of temples while we were there that were super beautiful. And then we finished up the tour uh, in the city. And it was just a really relaxing, nice tour. It was a little bit of a physical challenge, but it was still super relaxing with the electric bikes. And I had a really, really good time. Another thing that we got to do is we got to go to Miyajima. Miyajima is one of my favorite places in all of Japan. It's beautiful, beautiful island with lots of deer roaming around. There's also a beautiful shrine on the island, but we didn't really focus on that island this time. We got to go and enjoy some Japanese experiences with Okeiko. We went to this beautiful traditional house with a beautiful garden and we walked in and I got to try so many things. First of all, I got to put on a kimono. I got to wear a furisode, which was so beautiful. Actually, one of the most beautiful kimono I've worn while I've been in Japan. The colors were so vibrant and the women were super nice. One of them, she spoke really great English and was just so easy to talk to. I, that's kind of weird if I say I want to be her friend, but I do. But I also got to do shodo, which is uh, calligraphy. I got to try out calligraphy. I wasn't like the best, but it was really fun. They taught me the kind of techniques that I needed to, to use and I feel like I'm a little bit more knowledgeable than I was before. But yeah, and I got to keep my calligraphy after I finished, which was cool, I could take it home. I also got to make, I got to make onigiri. It was part of the experience. I got to learn how to shape and make my own onigiri bowl and put uh, my own fillings in it. And make the yeah, hole. Make the hole, yes, put the fillings. Let me make it a little deeper this time. <laughs> so I even had a, a vegetable that was specific just to Hiroshima, it was really, good, really tasty. So now I have that technique, I can take it home and now I can make my own rice balls. We also got the opportunity to check out Shimada Suisan or Shimada Fishery, uh, which had so many oysters. It's a, basically an oyster farm right next to Miyajima. We went out on a boat and got to have a look at where they grow all of the oysters. They also took us really, really close to the shrine in Miyajima. We got to go directly underneath Itsukushima and we got like the best view and there was no one around us because the tide was in. Usually Miyajima gets super busy. So when you go out to see the shrine, you can't really see it without people getting in any of your photos and everything. But because the water was up, we just got it all to ourselves. It was awesome. So after we looked at the oyster farms, we went back and I got to try some oysters and they were delicious and they were huge. I was not expecting them to be that big. So we got to have them cooked directly in front of us, super fresh. And it was amazing. We got to look at Miyajima while we did it. I looked very unprofessional. 
Ah, uh, no. <laughs> Benji, I can't do it with my left hand. Ah, uh, that's really good. I want that chunk. The only thing is, we didn't come in the exact right season, so if you come in winter and you go in the early morning, you can actually go and see them hoist up the oysters and actually gather them and, and farm them. But unfortunately, we went there in the exact right time, so we couldn't see that. But if you guys go on the tour, you can. So another thing that we got to do is we went to Tomonoura and we went to the Kayakers Cafe and then we went on a sea kayak journey for three hours and got to see some amazing things. There were so many fish. I don't know why, but they were all just jumping out of the air and we got to see some beaches and then they took us to this temple and this temple was kind of on the edge of a cliff and I'd never seen anything like it. It was just, it was so high up and when you stood by the temple you could look down and it was just all these crashing waves it was amazing so because this temple is uh in celebration and of support of women in fertility and not women in fertility oh my God. because one of the things that this temple is about is pregnancy and the safety of birth and everything like that a lot of the symbols and the and emma the the wish cards what do you call them <laughs> the boards that you write on here, usually at temples they'll have a picture of something to do with the temple and then you write your wish or your, your goal in the back. And so here the thing that they have is a pair of breasts to symbolize like plenty of milk for the babies and like that's something that you can wish for. So there's a lot of breasts. But it was, it was good exercise and we got to go kayaking and I had a really good chat with the, uh, the guide and it was just nice to get back to the ocean smell the ocean breeze and just have a really relaxing good time. Also when we got to the temple uh, he brought out like a little picnic for us which was really cute and I got to try some snacks that I'd never tried before. I got to try like a thing called a banana omelette but it was kind of like a, a fluffy cake with banana cream and then also like a coconut thing that I've never seen before in Japan. I guess they're just around Hiroshima so that was a really good experience. I had a really great time and it helped me get back in touch with nature and the ocean. Is that too hippie-ish to say? I don't know, but I had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> I was lucky enough to actually get to kayak in the same boat as the guide, so I got a lot of information, a lot of facts, and he was super nice and super helpful. He actually talked to us about Tomonoura and the fact that uh, Ponyo is kind of based about that area. Hayao Miyazaki went to Tomonoura and stayed at a house uh, which we actually got to see on the journey, and the house next to it is the house that, they, uh, that Ponyo lived in in the movie and that we saw the area where uh, he finds Ponyo and everything. It was really cool. I, I had no idea and so it was such a surprise when we got to see it. It was beautiful, really nice area. The last place that we went to was called Hokodo and it is a shop that is famous for selling and making the uh, Kumano calligraphy brushes. And they also do makeup brushes as well. So the shop is well known and a lot of famous poets have bought brushes from there. So I got the amazing opportunity to be able to make my own calligraphy brush. And I had some guidance from a lady who was clearly very famous. Uh, and she had her face on it, like a poster on the wall. She was uh, quite old, but she was amazing and very intimidating. So I got to make a brush with her. Uh, she was clearly a master. I think she's been doing this for over 40 years. So I felt completely out of my depth, but we ended up making a really beautiful brush uh, with my name engraved on it. And it was a crazy experience. I never thought I'd have that experience. We also got a tour through the shop and we got shown all the different kinds of hairs that they use to make different kinds of brushes. And we got told that there's over 70 steps to making a brush. She's one of the few people that are still around today that can make the brushes to such an amazing caliber. It was an honor to get to work with her. She was amazing. She was really cool and it was just so great to make my own brush. And now that I also did the experience where I got to learn how to do calligraphy and now I have my own calligraphy brush, I'm set. I'm going to become a poet. It's just what's going to happen. So get ready. Tokidoki Travelers no more. It's going to be a Tokidoki Japanese poet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was my trip to Hiroshima. I had such an amazing time and I can't wait to go back. So thank you to Attractive Japan for having me. And you guys, what did you like the best out of the trip? What, did, what looks like the most fun to you? Let me know in the comments down below and also let me know if you have somewhere that you want me to go next. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.